Hi, my name is Ben. I'm with Spectral Watermaker's technical department. I'm going over how to replace check valves um, on your Clark pump. Your Clark pump's typically going to be mounted like this with the feed water inlet and the um, serial number on the front. You'll see that if you were to have a pre-filter failure, many times when people change their pre-filters, they'll get a little piece of plastic or debris inside and it gets past the pre-filters and into the system so it goes right in there. And the first place it goes is going to be these check valves um, in the Clark pump. And you'll notice if you've got suddenly low pressure or no pressure at all in your Clark pump and you did before, it's probably something that's stuck and clogged in your check valves. Um, if you can access your Clark pump, it's a pretty easy fix. You just have to follow this procedure and you'll be good to go. On your Clark pump, there is a center block. Uh, you need to remove, you can remove as much of the Clark pump as you'd like. This is just the center block. You can do it with the Clark pump installed um, and just by removing the cylinder, um, in a separate video, I talk about replacing these seals and I go in more detail about how to actually access this. But if you're not building pressure, you probably need to look at your check valves. So many times you'll expose the Clark pump and you'll see just uh, something in the check valves. This is, uh, I put something in there, just a little piece of um, plastic, and it could be as easy as getting in there and pulling it out. People have sent in Clark pumps because they say they're not working and it's as simple as that. Um, Sometimes this could be a little piece of cellophane from your pre-filter, um, but sometimes you need to get a little bit deeper. So to replace the check valve, I've got an easy out here. I'm just gonna pull out the check valve seat. And then I'll pull out the parts of the check valve. And then I'll do it on the other side. You don't have to take out the seat on this side. It's bottomed out and there's typically not gonna be anything in there. I've seen this with rocks in here and you kind of just clean this out. Maybe do a little bit of sanding if you see there are damaged seats in there. But um, this is about as much as you need to do. Take a look at these, see if they need to, if they're scratched, they need to be replaced. These has to be a pretty good mating surface. So if there's all scratched up, you might want to replace them. But then we'll just put them back in. So, um, you know, with this one on this side, it's a little bit easier. You just kind of, first I kind of build it in there. So there goes the seat. There goes the washer. There goes the spring. Pop it, make sure it's in there. And then this goes right on top, clicks in. I'll wait for this for the end. These ones you kind of build out a little bit. And if you have a new um, check valve retainer, what you want to do, and you'll see in the rebuild procedure that there's these little nicks in here. We get these little nicks, we just use a a little clippers to put those in there just to build some friction so that when you put this in it doesn't pop out on you. Um, and then I kind of grab a dental pick and I'll and I kind of do my best to hold it in and all together. And then I feed it in there and then I push it in. And then I usually put a little bit of grease on these to get them to stay in place because um, it's going to be vertical. Then there you go. They're on both sides. Want to make sure that you get them in the right direction, but if you don't take the seat out, you probably won't mess that up. But then you just want to make sure you have this seal here and reinstall, and you should be good to go.